The Orville New Horizons Review, Episode 9, Domino. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but when she, at the very end, the first time I saw that, I'm like, I just thought of, uh, you remember in our review of, um, of Shutdown, where they introduced that, uh, Osgood's friend, and you're like, I should never get attached to new characters because they keep killing him off. Yeah. <laughs> well, then... yeah. At first, I thought, yeah, yeah. At, at the beginning, yeah, I thought that she was going to be maybe a one or two episode character, and it was like, okay, she's not going to be around for long, but she lasted longer than I thought she would. Mm hmm. <laughs> well, that's because they wanted to make sure that you got nice and attached to her, yeah. So that her death would hold an impact. Well, they also wanted. I think it was it was a combination of things. They wanted her there long enough that you you thought, okay, well, she's past the. We're gonna keep her on for a few episodes, and then, you know, keep her on an episode, then kill her off, or send her to the background. Okay, she's made it past that. Okay, she's made it past a few episodes without being shoved into the background or kicked off. She made killed. it almost to the end of an entire season. <laughs> Which is another tactic. Like, if they're gonna kill somebody off, they do that a lot. They would, you know, it would have the most impact at the end of a season. Yeah. But. In order to surprise us, they brought it back one episode, so you're like, oh, in the doing it in the penultimate episode. Yeah. Okay, so now you don't know. It's like, oh, okay, well, that was a surprise. Um, well, that and the reason for her death. Yeah. In order to reestablish, uh, in order to establish a connection with the Kalon. Because... Yeah. Her death. Yeah. It's like. It's a good old fashioned alliance that? square dance. Grab your partner, Doozy Doe. <laughs> Switch uh, off I'm now. Sorry. I'm sorry. That just made me think of Muppet Treasure Island. <laughs> Grab your partner, Doozy Doe. <laughs> lash him to the wheel. <laughs> Ste uh, <laughs> Yeah, they're just swapping uh, partners the around, like the Mocklin's Mocklin's <laughs> with, with the Union and the Union's with the with the Krill fighting against the Kalon. Now, the Union's ditched the, the, the Mocklin's, but they've picked up the Kalon. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, the Mocklin's had it coming. Yeah. Like, uh, also, um, traitorous Ted Danza. Oh, not that's not. Uh, that was the actor's. Man, not no, it's not. Kersky. It's not Tony Danza. It's uh, no, it Danson. Ted Danza. Oh, Danson, Danson or something like that. I thought it was Ted. Ted. It's I mean, Ted, it Ted something, Ted. but it's not Danza. It's. Uh, it's gonna. That's gonna. Uh, that's gonna drive me nuts until I go look it up. But yeah, Ted Danson, I think, is the. Maybe. Dancing. Uh, yeah, Ted Danson. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, like he, like he said. Well, maybe they shouldn't have tried to murder, uh, torture, and murder a small child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that tends to put people off <laughs> yeah and yeah i was wondering whether they would like because this is an opportunity like the way this this series could go it could go two ways at the end of this episode you know they could have the the raid succeed and they stop the the Kalon from being destroyed and they make friends with the Kalon and whatnot or at least and yeah, yeah, for now <laughs> yeah alliance for now at least uh or 
they could, you know, oh, uh, and they the could have fa- they could have failed. Then it wouldn't have been like it wouldn't have been the union doing it. <laughs> like it still gets done, yeah. and that Kalon get resolved, but the union isn't at fault because it wasn't yeah, the union's but choice. Keep in mind. That... I'm, I'm talking from a meta perspective, not an in oh, yeah. perspective. Yeah, but I mean, also, though, that throws off the balance in the universe so badly because. But that means better stories because then you got to deal with the balance and, you know, alliances yeah, and whatnot. But... but again, yeah, that's. Yeah. It, it, it could have it... gone. It could have gone either way depending on how he wanted to handle that. And yeah. once. once once we had a sacrifice like that, mm-hmm. like if it was just the initial fighting and all the people who, you know, who died in the the battle over that that planet, you know, all the all the Union ships, almost said Federation, all the Union ships and all the Union, you know, uh, officers and crew that died on that, you know, on that mission, like then you know. Maybe not, but once we got like a named character we know sacrificing for peace, like it's like okay, yeah, they're they're gonna bring the Kalon into the Union fold, or at least yeah. into a, into an alliance. And I mean, it it's a it's, it's a, a diplomatic a, victory. <laughs> it's a well done tactic to like show that sacrifice, like. She, you know, and the fact that Charlie hated the Kalon just solidified that because it's like she hated you, she gave her life for you. Be grateful, bitch. Well, yeah, and it was all about, you know, <laughs> proving like, to them that they're not the builders because yeah, that's because not... <laughs> as far as the Kalon are concerned. The Mocklins and Krill were plenty well, you know, ready to wipe the Kalons off the, off the map, like genocide yeah. them completely. So they might still think, yeah, those guys, they are the builders. They are still that kind of person. The Union sacrificed much to stop them from doing it. Yeah, exactly. So, the entire, you know, the entire act of saving them it's like we yeah they created the you know the device in the first place but they did it as a deterrent yeah they could have yeah they could have rolled up with the you know with a you know a a big ship they could they could basically done what the mocklins and krill did and just not say anything and then when they are ready to fire they just fire and wipe out all the kalon in the universe and nobody would ever know. Like there would just suddenly be no Kalon in the universe, and everybody would be like, "What happened? Oh, we killed them all." Okay, <laughs> you know, the union just says, "Oh yeah, yeah, we killed them all." The war's over with the Kalon. <laughs> yeah, they could have done that, but yeah, they yeah. did. I love how. Oh, this and the, the Krill had picked up on it. The Krill had figured this out, or the you know. Krill of the Mocklins had figured this out. Like, that's absolutely what would have happened. Like, they would have said nothing, then all of a sudden, boop, and all the Kalon in the universe just explode. And yeah. It's uh, like, yep, we got rid of the Kalon. I love how this just went all over the place. It's like, it's like, Kalons are good. Now they're bad. Now the Mocklins are bad. Now the Kalon are good. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, the and I was I was half expecting somebody to make an Anola Gay reference at some point. Hey, Anola's sexuality should be her. <laughs> That's the bomber that dropped the the bombs on Japan, the the nuclear bombs oh. on Japan. It's like feel like we're the Anola Gay here. It's like now they're not doing as you know they didn't do as much damage because they just knocked down you know some. You know, a lot of ships, a lot of military ships, and they were all military targets, so, you know, it wasn't a, you know, they were all 
perfectly or you know ordinary military targets but you know it's <laughs> like yeah this is we're going to end the war by dropping a few instances of this bomb <laughs> and that's going to be enough to say oh yeah we surrender <laughs> yeah um and you know we'll, we'll shorten the war and save millions of lives um sort of the idea um on both sides but it, it was that sort of we're going to use it a few times just to show you that we can and then that will be enough to stop the the stop the war completely because I can only imagine, like, if the Union, yeah, like, like, the way, how would, like, the, the Union wouldn't, if this, if it hadn't worked, and they had to just run away, like, they, they're like, we don't care, we won't, you know, we won't, you know, we don't believe you that you can scale it up and kill us all, you know, that it's just, you know, you've only showed us, if you really had it, you, you know, logically, you would have. If, if this really could be scaled up, you would have done it already because that is the logical thing to do. Like, how would the Union have deployed it? Well, I think they probably would have taken one of their, you know, because uh, the interesting thing about Union ships is generally they're the same ship, just scaled Difference. up. <laughs> they're all the same shape. They're just scaled up. You know, Mocklins look a little different, Krill look a little different, but all the Union ships look different basically the same just at different scales which at a distance makes must make cgi work a little easier because you can just use the same model just amped up um yeah at a distance you, you have to when, when you're doing close-ups you have to maybe do some some work here and there but like they would take one of their bigger ships with the bigger quantum drive equip it train a few people you know have, have them uh, trained on the orville with with Isaac and whatnot, and just say, "All right, if there's a battle, we're just gonna have these big dreadnought, you know, giant cruisers with huge, dedicated quantum drives for this weapon, and we will just deploy them to any conflict. This thing shows up, the Kalon die. You know, we just set up all these weapons as deterrents, like all our stations." We're going to teach everybody how to fire them. And then we're just going to blow up every, you know, if a Kalon shows up, you have this thing charged up, boom, you wipe out the Kalon. Or you just have a few of these big, beefy ones with big cores, and they just roll up with one of those each time. It's like, oh, the Kalon are invading in this sector. Roll up this ship, you know, the one of the Dreadnoughts. Throw the Dreadnought at it. They show up, they show up on the battlefield, fire the weapon, <clears throat> all the Kalon are wiped out, which, you know, and just sort of pin them in and say, okay, you keep sending stuff, we're just going to keep blowing you up, and eventually, you know, like, we'll just start taking out, you know, actual military targets of the Kalon, just like, yeah, oh, your manufacturing facility, <clears throat> we're just going to, in this sector, we're going to get rid of that. Oh, that, that one. And we're just going to pin them in until we've wiped out all their manufacturing facilities and all their free-floating ships until we just pin them into their own place and just say, okay, you can stay on your planet, but we're not letting you leave. We're just going to set up a ring of these things. And if you try to leave, it goes off and blows up your ship. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we're just going to contain you because... You you won't you won't stop killing people. <laughs> but yeah, I mean this is the this was a, the diplomatic way of winning this, and it's you know they which also brings into the thought like the Kalon aren't don't have slouches for weapons like they know how to manufacture weapons like they can just replace the Mocklins with the Kalon. It's like, yeah, we know how to manufacture weapons. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. We're walking weapons, so yeah. Yeah, they have the strategy of the crew. 
Because <laughs> remember when the Mocklins went to make the alliance at first, and she's like, and who do you suppose is going to lead this alliance? Me, because you're well, a Well, obviously it's going to be us, because you're a chick, and chicks suck. And it's like, you're an idiot. Go away. <laughs> I, I, I do have to say, I do kind of find it funny... That the Union is like hundreds of planets, yet when you have like two people, uh, two groups join each other, it's like, oh no, we're screwed. <laughs> well, keep in mind, most of the planets in the Union are scientists or, you know, are non-violent. They're mostly scientists and intellectuals, doctors. Yeah, this is basically like the Andorians leaving the Federation. Yeah. <laughs> and then you and then you have the Mocklins, who are our arms dealer. Yeah. Which it does yeah, I know most of them are, you know, you know, more peaceful and like, okay, well we don't have to really specialize hey. in weapons because the Mocklins do it. So we specialize in something else. Well, you know, imagine there's there's at least a society or two that could make weapons, but don't because the Mocklins do it. So we don't have to. We can exp we can put our invest in other things, and they're like, well, we have the talent for it. Let's just build weapons. And it's not like like the thing is also that they have the plans. They know how to make these things. It's not like the the weapons tech is secret from the union like they and know how to make if these were, if they already have the technology they could just reverse engineer what they have yeah and produce it on their own they just have to you know build they industrial can't... replicators it might not be uh the as advanced as the Mocklins well, are if, producing. It wouldn't be exact Mocklins copies. It, it wouldn't be... Yeah, they wouldn't be upgrading like the Mocklins. They wouldn't be able to upgrade what the Mocklins would have upgraded. Because but... if you remember, the Mocklins were up, upgrading their weapons and stuff for them all the time. Even um, like there was that episode where they like, went to the Orville and upgraded their weapons and um, defense systems. Yeah, so... so. But they, it, they, <laughs> their speciality. <laughs> yeah. Which I find interesting, like, I don't know what 10 is gonna be, like, but, like, if there's a season 4, eventually the Mocklins are going to come back. It's going to uh, be a, something's going to happen that's big enough that they get a Clyden situation. Or the 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 first tremors of that sort of Clyden style tra transformation have already been set in motion with Topa's abduction and torture. Like, there might be some Mocklins that go, whoa, 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 whoa. I may not, you know. Like, I was okay with you up to this point. Now you're doing this shit? No, I'm right? not cool with that. And they especially go through Clyde and... Since, like, especially since they're... You've got, you've got to take into mind that they said there were a bunch of females being taken off planet all the time. Yeah. So... Like, it secret but yeah they have they have people on the planet who dis who are you know, who dissent yeah they have dis there are dissenters but how many dissenters and how strong those dissent you know, how strong those dissenters are where they're at you know and how many of them and if they the, that dissent has grown <laughs> since <clears throat> that you know yeah they beat up they abducted a child and tortured her it's like is that and, is that and tried to kill her yeah tried and nearly nearly killed her almost did 
you know. It was not for want of trying. Yeah, not for want of trying. You would have <laughs> killed her if they hadn't stopped you. Like, yeah. you know, you may have this opinion, but you're like, yeah, I don't like this, but, you know, they may have the, the, the opinion about females, but they may not be like, oh, I don't, I, you know, it's, I may have this opinion, okay. but I don't think they should be, that should have happened. That yeah, was wrong. It, it's a lot like, you know, homophobes nowadays. There are, there are still people who are like, listen, I don't approve of gays. It's against my religion. But God also told me to, um, you know, love thy neighbor and not to murder. So why the hell are you murdering children? Yeah, they might have this ideology but they're like i don't think like i may not like you know may not like this but it doesn't mean i think we should torture and kill them over it and if they're getting them off the planet you know eh, <laughs> you know they may be you know they may be going mm. and so there might be people going maybe you're taking this a bit too far and and go yeah that's you know it's slowly creating and and suddenly joining up with the krill and this all being because of this one thing like it may not be a a strong enough tenet of you know for mocklins that like they're like okay so because of this shit like we're losing our place in the union and we're having to ally ourselves with the krill. Uh, yep. So especially yeah. since listen, women are inferior to us, right? You just put yourself into basically servitude to a woman. You know, you allied yourself, and your leader is was a woman, although she's been captured now, so. Yeah, which, that's a whole other situation, like, what happens with that? And, you know. more importantly, what happens to Anaya? Yeah, um, yeah, Anaya is, that's a, that's a big hanging question, but, like, also as a big geopolitical thing, the Union just attacked a Mocklin base to save the Kalon, formed an alliance with the Kalon, and abducted the the supreme leader of the supreme Krill. High Chancellor. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 high chancellor. They they basically abducted abducted her and took her to be tried for war crimes. It's like, I, I mean, think... <laughs> she know, did deserve it. <laughs> like, like, I seem that would, you know, because, you know, from a... You know, from up until... Okay, before this episode, the Union were an alliance with the Krill. The Mocklin switching over to the Krill didn't really change a lot like they were in a tenuous alliance anyway with the krill to fight the kalon it's like yeah we really don't like you but kalon murder bots we need to deal with the murder bots first now that whole alliance is torn to shreds because they just stopped they weren't them. in an alliance though well they were going to be in an alliance but the high chancellor that started the alliance started the treaty was uh, supposed um, well at least they weren't actively at war supposed. they were at the very least they weren't actively fighting each other that much they were mostly focused on the they, they, no, they may have they may have been skirmishers they but they were mostly war. focused on the Kalon they if they weren't officially an alliance, war. it was a sort of de facto, no, I'm focusing no, more on they, the Kalon. They declared war. I, I'm in, forgetting all these evolved. things because I'm just it, like, it's been a while. I, 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 did, I may or may not have just binged the series this week. 
because it's on Disney Plus now, so I'm like, cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's like, I don't, yeah, they, it seemed like they, they were at least not. No, they declared war. Yeah, we just never saw it as much. They, uh, be, yeah, well, they were more, you know, the Kalons were a bigger threat. Yeah, but they may have they, been wanted to be at war, but they didn't really, it was more of a de facto, we don't like you and we want to no. fight you, but we're... We're going to focus more of our attention on the Kalon because they're the bigger threat well, right now. They are technically at war because the the Krill tried to kill the president because they were on the planet uh, on Krill with a delegation to try to negotiate peace. But then the Grand Chancellor yeah. got deposed and killed. And so Talea, who became Supreme Chancellor, who tried to murder all of them. And, but they were rescued by Lamar and Finn yeah, as, disguise, as, in disguise. And, and they got them out in time. And they got them out in time. But while that is that was going on, there was a huge space battle going on. Yeah, they, just just long enough to get them between out, yeah between, out of there and between but, you and, and the crew. Yeah, and <laughs> during that battle, they said that they were de that it was a declaration of war because of the you know trying to murder their president. Yeah, but yeah, the they may have you know the the ten the the the, <coughs> the two may not have may be at each other's throats, but they were like okay, but we're fighting the Kalon right now, so like they're less they're less worried about Krill are less worried about the Union than they are about the Kalon, and so they were probably well they may have been technically at war like they're. Their focus is more towards the Kalon. And, and so, on its, in a way, the Krill are kind of like the um, Kalon as far as their opinions on, uh, would you call it jurisdiction? Because they believe that Avis gave them the right to take over the entire universe because the universe is was made for the krill and yeah. any any soulless non-believers are just you know soulless animals <coughs> pressed yeah. under dehumanization is the first thing when you yeah and so yeah they both have and the they have the the aspect of uh, destroy dehumanizing anyone. and you know depersonalizing the enemy it's like you know that savages savages baby yeah. human yeah it's <laughs> you know it's it's what sort of joins both the krill and the uh Kalon. and the Kalon is that they 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 have the Kalon don't have the cap. A lot of the Kalon don't have the capability to humanize in the first place, and they see them as the builders. They don't see. They don't discriminate between the builders and all other organics, organic intelligent life. They have yeah. no. They don't. They make no distinction between the two, and the krill make no distinction between any non-krill it's we are you know we are set to conquer we are the krill and you know so the union is, is basically the only one going hey you know we could just you know not kill each other and and that's part of what happened with uh kalon prime was they they humanized the the meat bags to him 
Yeah, exactly. It's like they're not just savage animals. They, you know, they aren't the builders. Yeah, which was they're... the big thing they had to show him was that yeah, your 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 programming is to your your categorization is too simplistic. Well, there are absolutely people like the builders, yeah. absolutely, that would do what you are doing in a culture that accepted that. What, you know you're, what, you're, what you're saying, like they would accept that. You know but... what aliens that makes me think of? I forget what they were called, but the aliens in the first season, the like really smart aliens... Oh yeah. That the dead just treated like everything beneath when... them and kept them as pets. Yeah, I know who oh, you're talking about. Oh, the zoo. About. Yeah. Yeah. And they ended up distracting them with with the uh with, <laughs> with with cheap reality TV. Oh my god. Oh my god. What if like next season, right? We come back to them and they're just a bunch of brain dead idiots staring at TVs. <laughs> <laughs> You mean Americans? Oh my god, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah, we have... So, yeah, that was the whole issue was that the Union humani was humanizing the Kalon when Kalon weren't, for lack of a better term, humanizing the other life forms in the galaxy and so that that humanization when they saw somebody you know sacrifice themselves like that you know that made them recalculate you know, like the union could have just done nothing said nothing and we would have been gone they made a threat, and it was logical, and they forced our hand. But if they did nothing, they could have just not told us anything. They could have yeah. just killed us off. But instead, they saved us and helped us stop the stop the the krill and the Mocklins from, you know, exterminating us. So, like. That's not a that's not a builder thing to do. The krill and the Mocklins, absolutely. They they're cutthroat and would would murder us in a you know they they showed they were minutes from you know completely Killing wiping us out. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, between the two, like the union actually you know treats us like one of them, like you know, another thinking being. The Krill and the Mocklins did not. That's a... It's confusing, but they seem happy to treat us like you know, other sentient... Now, not all members are going to be quite so happy to see us, but... Oh. <laughs> Most definitely. But we can kind of process that. <laughs> you know, that we understand. That one we understand. We don't understand the selfless bit. That's weird. But the, you know, hating us for, you know, killing lots of people, that that's, that's very understandable. <laughs> that's very understandable. That makes perfect sense to the Kalon. Like, we understand that. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, the, the Krill and the, the Mocklins are very understandable from their point of view. It's like, we completely understand these people. Like, they're doing exactly what we would expect them to do. The Union as a whole and the Orville are doing things that we don't expect and don't quite understand. But it is nice. And they aren't the builders. They don't treat us like garbage. So, yeah, maybe. Maybe we can get along with these Union types. And You know... <laughs> One thing I gotta say, like, uh, kind, of, kind of stupid on, like, several parts is, like, um, it's a good thing that, the, you know, before the Kalon become 
became good again. It's a good thing that they're not, um, that they have honor because uh, it's kind of stupid to bring the only, one of the only people that know how to activate the machine in hostile territory. Yeah. Yeah, they could have. It's like, oh, only she and Isaac can activate it? Okay, shoot, shoot. Yeah. Like, it was, yeah, yeah, that is a that is a thing. But they need but he they were still needed at that point to disable it. And since Yeah. If if they were able to disable it easily, I wouldn't put it past Kalon Prime for primary from doing that. If if they had been able to, you know, take it off quickly, like what Kalon what would Kalon Primary do? Logically, okay, we've stopped it. Kalon Primary goes, okay, it's it's deactivated. Everything's shut down. Yes. Psh, psh. Grab no, the I, I... grab the device, take it back up to their, you know, you know, take, take it back like... to the shuttle, and get out of there and go go join up, go back to one of his Kalon vessels, and they reverse engineer it because. They know the Union could make another one. So, like, okay, we'll reverse engineer it and protect ourselves from it. I, I do like the Kalons because they think logically. <laughs> it's like, huh, we can't really do anything, so we accept your terms. Yeah, it's like, we'll figure out a weakness eventually, and then, then you'll be in deep. But for now, you've forced our hand. It's like... We don't want to do this, and as soon as we figure out a weakness to this thing, we'll be back at your throats. But for the moment, you got us. <laughs> you know, It'll last as long as as it still remains the case that we, you have this advantage. Yeah. Uh, you know, speaking of her sacrificing herself, I think like the last thing that brought her over the edge to actually make that decision was Isaac saving her. Um, I think one of the, like, big things with her was her, um, you know, she's, first of all, going through some shit. Yeah. Her, the love of her life was murdered by the, um, by the Kalons. She, which is why she hates the Kalons. And, um, I think her noble sacrifice was also a, you know, it's not, I want to die. I want to die doing something that meant something. Yeah. Well, because and it's also... He, She's, she's, in normal service, if the Kalon hadn't done what they'd done, she would probably be a fairly normal, noble Union officer. And so, she has, she, ha she hates, like, of, uh, what? Her ability. Sure, she has special duties because of her abilities. Yeah. But, but yeah, but from a... An ethical standpoint, from a nobility standpoint, she's fair. She would have, if in a in a normal situation, with the Kalon not doing what they did, she would be, other than her special ability, she would be a fairly normal officer from that sort of perspective. But she, the Kalon, made her make an exception in her nobility of. These are monsters. Just kill them. Just murder them to death. I don't care. They've done something so unforgivable for me that taking something something un done done something so unforgivable that I, I just I can't. I can't be the noble person. Like that's too nice. And so she can't do that. Then she gets to know like Isaac and then learns a bit about the builders and how they were treated and why they are the way they are and over time has 
in you know seeing what they can become with some of the the two that she's seen that have become good or at least you know who have not you know who are capable of change they're capable of change and becoming good and so that's brought her back towards the towards a mercer sort of you know we need to worry about genocide with this you know uh -uh. like she's she went on a full arc from i hate them kill them all they are a an exception to my and it, they're since they're automatons they're they're automatons they're they're, they're androids they 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 it makes it easier it makes it that that crossing that line so much easier it's like you've done something terrible to me i hold a grudge against you and you're not a living being you're not an organic being which makes it so much easier to hate you to the point of wanting to you know just die it's it's kind of like hating a toaster to yeah her. like or a hypo scanner or whatever but yeah and so she's gone through the arc of you know but then she realized wait that's exactly what caused this in the beginning because that's how her their builders were yeah it's like they're just tools and so over the she may not have she may not have liked the Kalon and what they did and what but she over this series has regained that union nobility that she started with and that sort of and she's regained that and i'm gonna show you how much better i am <laughs> you know how much more noble than you think i am you know i'm going you know i'm going to do what is right i'm gonna do what's right i'm gonna be the noble officer i know i can be and that's what she did when she sacrificed herself was i'm going to be the most noble person i'm going to be doing what's right and i don't care whether it's that it's the kalons i'm saving i am doing what's right and they are no longer an exception from my you know don't genocide list yeah and so you know she she showed how noble she was and how much in, from an outside perspective how much better she is than the Kalon. I'm just better than you. And you know and that confused the crap out of the Kalon. It's like or Kalon primary. He's like I, I, what? I, don't, I don't understand. And so because they were able to do that you know the peace could be made an alliance could be made and if you're in an alliance with Kalon, i mean that that does it does rebalance things a bit yes the mocklins have gone over to the krill but the Kalons have come over to the union and they were both like the krill and the union were both thinking we kind of need to join forces to fight off the krill i mean, fight off the the Kalon. now the Kalon is just on the union side so like that may create a situation where the balance of power is re-leveled and so now the krill may not want to <laughs> not you know make peace but just be really careful how they attack <laughs> because oh yeah the the kalon are just going to decimate us if we try and attack the union so <laughs> maybe we should rethink our stance against the union which also is another thing with this um with them you know basically taking their high chancellor it's like what if they just like cut her off and her whoever her vice president whoever her second command is you know is actually a lot more like I don't, we're not exactly sure exactly how the political system in on krill works but 
if like somebody from the old regime that's more more open to dialogue takes over and is like a bit more pragmatic and is like you know what yeah uh because she's gone i was able to rise to power you keep her <laughs> and i'll just deal with the krill we have the problems we have because that's just this whole fighting is going to cause more problems than not fighting so we're not going to sign an armistice or a treaty or anything but we're probably going to not attack <laughs> as long as you stay on your side of the line but yeah you can if you can keep the Kalon from attacking us maybe we don't attack back <laughs> uh but we don't know what what the well the political ramifications of her being gone are because that could shift a whole lot of stuff Ooh, yeah i guess we'll find out and we'll probably have to deal with um uh, those aliens from, you know, like the uh, the Forbidden Krill Space in X Season 2, they might be like a new enemy. Hmm. Yeah, they set those up, so. <laughs> it's, it might, <laughs> it might be one of those things where, you know, you end up with, Actually, you know, they, it's, again, there's a bigger fish, and everybody has to kind of get together to fight the bigger fish. Yeah. Or there's a shift in krill politics that leads them to, you know, to where their next election comes up, or somebody does a vote of no confidence and starts another election, and the groups that were energized behind her having lost the ability you know having lost like yeah. she looks worse and so now they're shifting you know the politics shifts again and the old regime comes back online in which case you get an alliance again yeah. and or at least, you know, a non-aggression pact, both of them like, okay, well, we can work together and respect each other's boundaries, and then we can both flourish from this. Yep. But... Uh, honestly, I, I thought she was going to be saved at the very last second, but nope. Yeah, that was... It's like, I might be going, but I'm taking most of you bastards with me. It was a, it was a noble sacrifice. But, um, which kind of, like, it doesn't completely reset the status quo. Some things have changed. Oh, yeah. But, like, on the crew, on who's on Orville, like, the status quo has been sort of restored because somebody who was there for the season that came in at the beginning of the season as an extra person because they had a, cer a certain set of people and they've replaced people because their security got replaced but that reset the status quo now you've done this so now she's gone so that resets the status quo again and so now the whole thing is is back to an even keel. And so whatever you do from here, though the universe at large is not back to the status quo, the Orville itself is.
We lose Doc. <laughs> oh, did we? I haven't heard her talk in a bit. Oh, wow. Uh, Doc? I don't remember if she said be right back or not. Yeah, she uh, might have. Huh? Oh, you're here. Okay. Okay. I've been here. Okay. Oh, you just went silent for a second. Yeah. Uh, was... my, my phone accidentally went mute. <sighs> oh, okay. okay. So you probably have I been trying to talk I, at us, but you, you see, we've been ignoring you. <laughs> yeah, I I <laughs> my I dropped my phone and it hit the mute button. Ah. Uh. But like usually Doc has jumped in by now or something I've said. <laughs> oh God, do you know what I really want? I want that uh, I want that really old booze from the twenty first century. <laughs> I, well, you can probably not. just go buy it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I have to build a time machine go to the future. It's the 21st century. That's this century. Yeah. Yeah, it's, but, but it's he not... wants 300 aged whiskey. <laughs> Thank you. When would we know what the date is? Probably. 24. 4, 17, 24, 18. Okay, so 300 years prior to that would. Is it 300 years? From 2400? Let's well, say 21st century, but they also said if, if it's in the 2400s, but 300 no. year old, like. No, no, no. Yeah, they are. In the 25th century. Yeah, but I'll just go with the 2400s just for the sake of yeah, not having to jump back and forth in numbers. But so, so basically, basically, it was made this this time. Around yeah, so this time. around this time, so you could you could just if it was if it was well if it was 2400 that would be 400 years old. Yeah, that's why I said. Oh, I thought years. you said 300 years old. Okay. No, and, I said 400. Okay. Must have misheard you or something. Um, then, yeah. So you could just, you literally, like, it didn't have a label on it, but I'm sure, like, you could just go. Yeah, but it. as they said, the point of it is it being 300 years old. <laughs> but, yeah. So. <laughs> I realize I would not, I would be kind of an odd one out there. Yeah. Because I don't drink alcohol. No. Uh, let's see, anything else on this episode? I mean, it's a good episode. It's a big episode. It really not is. Not in like size, because that was Midnight Blue, I think was the yeah. last episode. That was a. An hour and a half. That was a feature length. Like this one was yeah. an hour and eighteen minutes. So it was still long, but and and McFarland seems to be really taking advantage of the fact that he's on a streaming platform and just goes, I can make it whatever length I want. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I I feel like they are doing so much closure with this season I, it would not surprise me if they didn't do another season I wish they would but at the same time they're tying up so many loose ends and like just you know there's enough out there that they can yeah. continue but they're also and there are so many tropes they haven't explored yet they haven't ever they have never done like a mirror verse type thing yet which every sci-fi has a parallel universe. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Now, now and that, that got me thinking, like, okay, so mirror universes are usually more aggressive, more angry, more fascist, more... Rah. What if they go to the mirror universe and it's even softer? Like... Like, the krill are all pacifists. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, in this parallel mock, universe, everybody's mock, a pacifist. Like, Every <laughs> the the Mocklins, instead of building weapons, build, like, 
science tech. Or, yeah, like, it's, you know, it's all, like, it's even softer than than their universe. Like, they look at that the, the, they look at the Union vessel, and, they, and they're like, like, the Orville comes in to their universe, gets sort of squished into their universe from somehow, and they look at it in abject horror. It's like, look at all those weapons and shielding. What's going on in your universe? It's a hellscape if you need all that. That that would definitely be a Orville style twist. <laughs> yeah, the whole yeah, yeah it's like yeah. Or 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 a ship from a mere universe comes to ours like as if we are the mere universe. Yeah. But like, we're the ones with the goatees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. It's the Orville. I was like, wait, <laughs> are we the bad guys? Exactly. Yeah. Are, 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 are we the hyper aggressive compared to you? Yeah, I, I really, I want to see I, that. Now I, now I want to see that. I want to see. Yes. The, yes. Because that Are that is that is that universe? is something very Orville, something Orville would do. It's what? like we accidentally get shifted into a parallel dimension, but when we show up, we look like we're armed to the teeth and aggressive compared to the the locals. The locals are, are all horrified at seeing us. It's like no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. To keep the trope the other way around. And Orville from a parallel universe comes to uh, uh, comes to Maine, uh, you know this one, but they're the pacifist ones, and we are the evil of mere universe. Yeah, it's it's gradations like you have the softer universe than the Orville, and then you have the the heart. They have a they have a Terran universe, you know, a a, a mirror universe that's more aggressive than them, but. That one is, you know, that one isn't the one that just, just if we, it would be fun to see that trope played with instead of, yeah, it's yeah. just instead of all of them have you know, a, a mirror, you know, Trek has done so many mirror universes where the Every mirror universe is more it. aggressive. This one, it's less aggressive and they're all horrified at the. <laughs> and how everything is armed to the teeth. And every every universe has done it. Doctor Who has done it. Big Finish has done it with um, Unit. Doctor Who did it back in the 60s. Yeah. So, yeah, like, um, loads of them love doing parallel universe stuff. Most sci-fi, it's like one of the most common tropes is parallel universe yeah you know in, in a mirror you know in a mirror darkly it's just yeah it's 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 the same it's Infer it's inferno yeah. inferno was the um third doctor episode where the doctor gets sent to a parallel universe yeah so yeah i just that would be <laughs> like either way I personally like the if you're gonna play with it, play with it all the way and send them to send Orville into the the the, the marshmallow universe. And I, th I I just I like I like the prime Mercer and gang showing up to you know like they immediately they show up and it's like <gasps> What the hell is that? <laughs> it's arms and the teeth. We surrender. <laughs> it's like what? Oh my gosh! And all of the uh, all of the parallels, the their idea of swearing is like saying heck. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, what the heck? Watch your language. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, what the hell's going on here? And they just like all pale, like. Or you can you could play it straight like that, where it is just a softer universe, but 
you could also play it where it's mostly a softer universe, but that's because it has this really dystopian hard edge at the very bottom layer. Like, that is a sinister graham cracker on this s'more. Like, it's all marshmallow on top, but there is a sinister graham cracker keeping it that way. That nobody really knows about. Dude, dude. It's the, um... <laughs> it, it's a Terran Empire scenario, but they're all marshmallowy, and it's like Earth runs the universe, basically, and they're all part of the Terran Empire. But but the way that they won, like the way they won, was something that was very it was very sinister, but it ended up. Like, over time, they softened out because nobody was wanting to fight them. So they just sort of created this hegemony. And then nobody wanted to fight them because they could always, like, they knew what they were capable of. And then eventually, everybody just sort of got soft because everybody was sort of under the same hegemon for so long. And there was so much peace for so long. And nobody wanted to fight for so long. And eventually the, 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 the empire kind of reformed and softened out and the whole thing, the whole universe has gone really soft, but it has this really bitter, harsh background that ended up with all the softness. I don't think that would actually really work, but that's, it would give you a reason, it would give you another twist because you're just, oh, we or... ended up in a plot, in a, in a soft universe. But, oh, no, there's this hard edge underneath. Or the Kalon run the universe and keep everyone as pets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or it's something or, or, like that. Yeah. Or, no, 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 that one race from the first season. Just keep everyone as pets. And so, like, they... You know, they expanded, and so it's all their territory. So everybody's passive and stuff because everybody is under their rule, and we're just wild animals to them. Yeah, something like that. It would, you, you would need to do something where you had, a, if you wanted to do a soft, you know, soft mirror, you'd have to have, like, you could explore that and it would be interesting, but it would sort of, it would... That flavor would be interesting for a short amount of time. It wouldn't make a great episode. You need conflict. Yeah. So you would have to have some sinister underpinning. And they have to make the decision whether, okay, everything is peaceful and everybody's needs are being met and everything's nice. But there's this sinister underpinning. We could unpin that and free them and give them complete free will but we would also destroy all the underpinnings of this soft universe. And who knows what would happen afterwards. You know, form a rebellion against the evil overlords who are, you know, take care of everybody and stuff, but at the same time, everybody is a slave. Even if and they don't realize it. Yeah. They, to them, they accept it. They're like, oh, it's all good. But they're slaves. Yeah. But, yeah. So, it's, yeah. That's, that would be how you would do that episode in Orville. Yeah. And I really want to see a season four, because I assume that's not what happens in the final episode of no. this season. So, if, if. The final episode really ties everything together, sadly. <laughs> Yeah, well, see, that's the thing is I would rather have a nice, tidy ending if we don't get a season four. If we yeah, get a season four, yeah, if, if we, we get a season get four, season great, four. we can just start up new stuff. But yeah. if we don't, at least you're not leaving it on a cliffhanger. We yeah. know we know where things are at the end of the season. Plus, the way they're addressing all of these old stuff from like past seasons pretty much every episode has had some reference to a prior season mm. like 
and brought something to it to like tie that in. Yeah. So it feels like closure. Yeah. It's so this yeah. entire season has been feeling like closure. Yeah, because they, they they didn't know like they from a production standpoint, they didn't know if they were gonna get another season. They might they might yeah. still get a season four. And I would And now be... that it's on Disney Plus, Disney yeah. might be taking over and be like cash grab. Yeah, which... it depends on how how effective want... Orville is. Like if yeah. it's if it's which doing them some good the, which is why I binged the entire series as soon as it came out. So that, to add to that demographic of I'm, and I'm like telling everybody watch on Disney Plus. Yeah, it's all or available Hulu. now so you can just go watch it binge it yeah, so that it's... so that disney realizes ooh we need to make more of this yeah <laughs> and i'm sure yeah i mean if even if it depends on how much mcfarland wants to do more of this cuz i mean it depends on and also how much of it he owns like yeah. what the contracts are like if he owns yeah. the if he owns the property and he sells it to disney as you know, you can show this, like this, you know. But he retains the rights to, like, they can buy the seasons, but he retains the right to make the seasons. Like, he might just make it and sell it to somebody else if they are not well, going to. It was originally on Fox. Yeah, but Probably Fox was bought by Disney, it... so it has exactly, worked. which is why it's on Disney. Yeah. So yeah, Fox and Fox slash Disney bought them. I don't know whether he retains the rights to make them. Like if he if he makes it and can sell it to somebody else, if if they don't want it. So I don't know how that's gonna go, but I hope that they he gets a season four, which I do. This is a great series, and it does so much right to give you that feeling of classic star trek yeah like it's yeah it's like tng meets lower decks it's like yeah there's some humor in there but it also handles modern subject matter but with allegory and pretty competent writing exactly yeah. It's like they're, they're doing what Chib what Chibna wants to do, what Orville is doing, but he's such a hack he can't. Yeah. They are they are addressing really deep, <coughs> really important subjects, but they're breaching them in such an approachable and such a non preachy way that even you know, somebody who's like against it, like I mean I am like pro abortion. It's not even pro choice. I just hate <laughs> just, just, uh, just kill them all. Just, just Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But the um the way they addressed pro life in the gently falling rain where they you know had the child they projected a what the child would have been and like you know on the one hand if the child had to be aborted for a medical reason that is awful like if they really wanted that child but they couldn't have it either miscarry or because it would kill one of one or both of them that is a terrible thing but if it's somebody who like like you know me who does not want a child i think that is a fair punishment like i would be terrified because i hate children but <laughs> If if a if they projected a child like 
are you my mommy? And I'd be like, get it away from me. <laughs> can we can we stick a gas mask on this? It might be funnier. <laughs> it would be. And less traumatizing. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, I think that is a fair thing. Like, and honestly, if, you know, delegate, you know, um, regulations to allow for abortions stated that you had to care for a child before, you know, like to try to get you to have that oxytocin release to try to get you to see what you're losing out on. Yeah. Then yeah, I think that's a fair, you know, I think that's fair. Um as fun as this discussion is, I would like to let you know that it is 23 minutes into the next hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've I mean, the Orville is a two-hour show. It is, but, you know, it's yeah. extra, you know. We've basically gone almost minute to minute. Yeah. Um, and we mostly stayed on topic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oddly yeah. enough. Yes. We but mostly we actually should... stayed on topic. Now we should do the next one before it does run out of time. Okay. <laughs> um.